You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for June 4th, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we are between graduations and coming up on birthdays, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Well, that was sweet of you to put that in there. Oh, you know, I just, it's a, it's a busy time of year around here. It is. Mm-hmm. We have a middle child's high school graduation tomorrow, Saturday afternoon. Uh huh. We also have a uh, birthday, her birthday. Mm-hmm. She will be 19. Yes. In a month. In less than that. In le- a little, well, about, a month, about a month. About a month. And uh, then I will be <clears throat> You'll have a, a birthday. certain age. You'll have a birthday. I will have a birthday two weeks later. Exactly two weeks later. Yeah. And so, yeah. Exciting. And then we have our 10th wedding anniversary in August. We so do. We was very exciting. It's a busy exciting. summer. It busy is. Summer. And it's so nice that everyone in our family has had at least one shot. At least one shot. We're yes, just indeed. waiting for youngest child to get her second shot in a couple mm-hmm. weeks. And then our, we will have a fully vaccinated family by, by let's face it, Joe Biden's deadline. That's right. Well, we all, we, we all go by Joe Biden's deadline. Whatever <laughs> Joe Biden says. We're on his timetable completely right. at all times and unless, in every way. <laughs> unless Pritzker says otherwise. Unless, but, Joe, unless J.B. Pritzker tells us to change it. Because he's richer. And that's important. And, and closer to home. And closer to home. We, he, he can... can he can spit on us from his mansion. He really can. If we're <laughs> we're we're right next door, and you know we see him around town all all the no, time on his, on his hoverboard, on his Segway. Just it zooming. is weird that we saw Governor Hedge Fund more often. I I have never seen J B Pritzker face to face. Well, that, I, I've I think, seen I've seen Governor Hedge Fund a couple times. I think a, a year in lockdown might have cut down on That's the traffic. That's probably you know? it. I'll probably have an opportunity to see J B. Sure. Maybe this summer. Maybe at one of the uh, m- menus on Main Street kind of things. Yeah, the, 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 one, uh, of the, one of the many, truck. many events. Because that we're there was a whole bunch of local events. And I just, I had a meeting this morning with some people. And everyone's very excited a to get A community back to. meeting. Community yes. meeting. And um, we, there's, we have big, big plans for our little, little town. But it was very much, um, we want to help this town restart itself. And... It's, it's, I don't know if you've ever had the privilege of serving on a committee where everyone is eager to do the work. I know. Everyone's giving 80%. It's not an 80-20 rule on no, that group. Really everyone's is. giving as much yeah. as they can to it, which is which great. Is, which is weird because, you know, yeah. I'm not used Usually to Usually you're the 80. I know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Everybody's I, saying. And Drift Class will work on that for us. Yeah, he'll take care of that. He'll take care of it. Yeah, I have um, uh, a friend of mine and I have suspended at least one writer's group. Mm-hmm. That we facilitated. We were at Columbia College. We had and we had taken over a writers group, a fairly fairly prominent, although moribund writers group. And after about eight months, we suspended it because it turned out um, he and I were doing all the work. Yeah. Um, everybody was supposed to turn in work for editorial comment, and what they wanted was for us to mark them up and tell them how to do writing. Mm. And it was, you know, and when we turned our stuff in, the comments were, this is great. This isn't any work at all. This is great. He's just doing it. Now let's get back to my stuff. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it was like, you know what? I don't, I didn't sign up to be an editor of everyone else's work. For free. For free. I signed up <laughs> to facilitate a group of writers helping each other. Yeah. And this seems a, a very unbalanced sort of thing. So we eventually went our own way. And, uh, so we want to we say happy summer to everyone. Illinois is going to stage five, we hear. Yeah. On the 11th of June. No pants. No pants anywhere. No pants at all. Everywhere. Come on down. No. J.B. Yeah. Pritzker has to wear pants. No, he does. I'm sorry. That's yeah. yeah well, he has to. Yeah. Uh, so we're reopening mm-hmm. uh, and uh, very excited about that. Mm-hmm. And we hope what? all of you are doing well where you are. We noticed that the uh, reopening and... Um, the vaccine hesitancy map that 
the White House has released, where we're looking for volunteers to help our friends and neighbors Mm -hmm. uh, in areas of concern where it is a concern that we're not going to reach herd immunity. And someone noted this morning, wow, this looks just like the electoral map for Trump where all the problems (laughs) are. (laughs) It kind of does. Yeah, Yeah, it's 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 the South and Wyoming (laughs) are having the biggest problem. And so... Uh, you know, that, that is unsurprising, No, but, no, um, and we and, feel oh, for those of you who are blue dots in red States, we have a lot of listeners who are blue dots in red States do. who are dealing with this. We and, do. uh, hopefully, uh, we can get, get you guys and your States up to herd immunity. This is not a red and blue thing. This is a, let's get past the pandemic no, thing. No. So, and we will, um, and we will. And, yeah. and I, you know, it's, 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 it's confusing feeling to feel both very hopeful and still extremely pessimistic about the future at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but that's Mm -hmm. what we do here. We, we, when I feel that that way, I do postcards to voters. Yeah. (laughs) Is, is, is hopemism a work? Hopemism. Yeah. I do my hopemism. Yeah. It's sort of like, yeah, you know, and what that gets us to a a point and we're going to talk about a little bit more later on of, um, we had a letter show last week and we mm-hmm. very much appreciated all your input and appreciated all the feedback and it was a blast to do and another podcast at a letter show we'll get to that in a little while but they did talk about um answering sort of the practical hard-headed questions uh that they don't talk about among themselves mm-hmm. and i found that very interesting uh but right now there's a couple of items of housekeeping first i do want to say that um opinions are evenly divided over whether or not me being banned for life from Twitter was a good thing or not. Mm. Um, (laughs) So uh, I appreciate all of the uh, advice solicited and otherwise from many, many people. Um, uh, Twitter has helpfully sent me a second uh, notification. If I didn't get the first one through my head, it's like, no, you're really, really banned forever. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't, I didn't really need to be kicked at this point when I'm already down, but for some reason they felt the need to, send me another email saying, nope, 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 nope. Um, about half the people thought um, it was a really good idea because then I can get back to the serious work of blogging and writing and doing longer pieces and that that's where my gifts lie anyway. And Twitter's a that's waste of time. That's what your wife told you. That's a sewer, all of which is true. It's all, it's all true. It's all valid and it's all true. Um, the flip side of that is that um, my traffic has dropped precipitously. Mm. Because Twitter was for, and it is a sewer, and it's a rabbit hole. It's a series of rabbit holes. Um, it's also where I had ten thousand plus followers mm-hmm. that would that would that would move my stuff out. And and when you are, as we are, an independent podcast or independent blog, and you do not have a network behind you, you don't have a series of of uh, interlocking other blogs and other podcasts who refer to you when there's no attachment to a a print publication, you are entirely reliant on Mm self-promotion and by the, by the, you know, by the good work of our listeners and and our readers. And one of the um, only sources of that is Twitter. I wish it weren't so, uh, but it is. So when I was kicked off of Twitter forever and ever, my traffic went way down and has stayed way down. And that has a direct um, effect on whether or not it's worth spending a lot of time writing long posts and thoughtful mm-hmm. posts because it's, you know, <laughs> you know, is that, is, is the ROI on that actually worth it? I think mm-hmm. it still is because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm stuck being a writer for the rest of my life. Cause I was going to say, it helps you formulate your thoughts for the podcast too. It I, does. I find that with my writing too. Yeah. And traffic in May is particularly That's low. true too. Mm-hmm. Every year. So that's just true. And there are a, a, a small number of people out there uh, who post my stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I mm-hmm. appreciate that immensely. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, really do. And I, I, it is interesting sort of starting all over again, um, you know, from zero, um, as, as twas 16 years ago. And some things have changed and some things have not. So, so there we are. Um, the second point was about... This thing that I heard you in the other room, that we do not have a gigantic house. I can hear uh, when my wife says, holy shit. Yeah. I, um, I I don't swear in the house a lot all the time. No, just in church. Yeah. But this story mm-hmm. that came out this morning, I just went, holy crap. I mean, I, whatever I said. 
You swore, honey. I swore mm-hmm. at my computer. I saw mm-hmm. this and I went, are you kidding me? Maricopa County, Arizona election data is now being examined at an undisclosed location in Montana. Yup. And this is a story that was published behind a paywall. Shame mm-hmm. on them. Well, actually, uh, um, NBC Montana. Oh, did they pick a, it up? As a similar story, which is not paywalled. And, okay, and it's, AZ uh, Central, NBC Montana. Yeah, Arizona. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Arizona, yeah. They've taken to uh, auditing the election data mm-hmm. at a secure lab in Montana at mm-hmm. someone's log home or something. We don't. I, I assume it's the Unabomber or a second yeah. Unabomber mm-hmm. um, examining, examining. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's time for some, you know, you know who said that it was time for some Arizona Republicans to go to jail over this? Jennifer Rubin. Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised. You yeah. Know, there's, <laughs> it is strange bedfellows days. It is strange and, bedfellows. But she uh-huh. just said it's time for some some criminal charges to be leveled against officials who are engaged in breaking federal law and and everybody like knows they're trying to change votes of course they're trying they to ma- change the outcome of the election well and and the um the the long the longer story which was available on nbc uh montana or nbc arizona um uh it does have sophia solis who's the deputy communications director for the secretary of state's office mm-hmm um, saying, you know, basically, we don't have any authority over this. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing that the Senate, that the Arizona Senate allows us to do is observe. That's it. This is all on them. This is a bunch mm-hmm. of elected Arizona um, uh, insurrectionists and lunatics and and 3 percent OAN viewing Republican yeah. le- elected legislators. Who, who yep. are trying, clearly trying to bait the Biden administration into sending federal troops and demanding what's no, so they can say, see the deep state doesn't want you to know. Yeah. The deep state cover up. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and since the Biden administration didn't do that, it just gets weirder and weirder. They're spinning in their, in owning competence. They're hanging from their own incompetence and they're going to get, hopefully they're going to get voted out over it because it's embarrassing. This is, um, uh, the cabin is somewhere in the, in the Swan Lake area and is owned by a guy named Ben Cotton who is the CEO of one of the companies that the completely unqualified auditors have subcontracted to. And um, the the Secretary of State's office were concerned because these people may or may not have copies of actual private voter registration data. Which means lawsuit. Which means lawsuit. Individual voters can sue now. The company won't say whether or not they have that data. Uh Uh-huh. Um, there's no longer an independent observer to even see what they're doing. No, That's the my, only... but if you have filled out a paper ballot or a mail-in ballot, you can sue because you're sure you have a right to have your ballot treated in a legal manner. Well, this, Arizona clearly this is you know p- part of a much larger strategy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but the, apparently NBC, it is NBC Montana, contacted Cotton with questions and was told. He has signed a non-disclosure agreement <laughs> and can't talk about the audit and can't, cannot even talk about where the lab is located or if it is secure at all. So it this really – and so you know, this The should, transparent audit has an is, NDA. It's <laughs> is, is completely secret in another state in the Unabomber cabin, or maybe it isn't. We can't tell you because that's how democracy Every, works. Everyone on Twitter was saying – it's in a van down by the river. Down by the river. <laughs> you know, normally I don't recommend drone strikes, but right about now, <laughs> I'm thinking, hey, you know, if you're, you, we, we mistook you for a target range. So we're really, really sorry about that. Um, and it is, it's so ridiculous, but it isn't ridiculous. It's, it's terrifying because yeah. all these people should be rounded up and, and put in jail. Yeah. Right now. I mean, this is flagrantly illegal. It is clear they're trying to cheat. It's clear that... Donald Trump is is pinning his promise that he'll be reinstated on shit like this. It's also clear this is part of a national strategy um, mm-hmm. of of, and this is one of the things I wrote about this week, which in my never ending battle <laughs> to tell you not to trust never Trumpers, mm-hmm. um, which is two months ago on one of the Bulwark podcasts, 
um, our, our allies were all bitching about how the liberals keep calling what's going on in Georgia Jim Crow 2.0. And mm-hmm. I just don't hold with like it's not Jim Crow, it's not Jim Crow 2.0. It's there's some things that are bad, some things that are good, but the whole idea that this is somehow Jim Crow stuff is ridiculous. And it really makes our politics it cheapens our politics, Blue Gal. It makes our politics less, you know, respectful. They went around and around and around. Two months later, all the shit that's happening in Texas and in Arizona and in 40 other states, and the hundreds of voter nullification and voter suppression and election cancellation um um laws that are being filed across the country, what do you call a system in this country where a minority authoritarian racist party is trying to cling to power by denying the votes and overturning elections of the majority? In this country, that was known as Jim Crow. And I would very much like to see these same self-righteous assholes who built the Republican Party that they now despise and who still nag liberals about going too far and being too excessive and, and being too extreme in our language, just have to walk back two months on their own words and see, well, what do you call it then? Because it was clearly, this was the canary in the mine shaft. You know, Georgia was first of a national strategy to deny enough votes in enough states and undo enough elections so that Republicans can hang on to power forever. And that is apartheid law. That is Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear one of these people at one point in their fucking lives say, I was wrong. Well, I'm willing to say I was wrong Mm because I was wrong. I thought that what would happen after the 2020 election is we would have an abandonment of Donald Trump as we had had an abandonment of George W. Bush. Yeah. After the, what, the... 2008 election. Yeah. Right. After, after the collapse of the Bush administration. Right. Yeah. That, that, that everyone would go, I'm an independent. And right. I was wrong. That's not what happened. But what did happen was a different kind of rewriting of history. Yes. And it's happening with the help of the mainstream media. It's happening uh, with members of Congress aiding and abetting this rewriting of history. And particularly what I'd like our listeners to do is watch, if they do, if they ever watch, the local news to see what's happening in terms of coverage of the January 6th MAGA mob insurrection, the Trump Mm -hmm. mob killing cops, violently attempting to overthrow an election. And see if you see on the news within that context, mentions of Donald Trump or mentions of the Republican Party or pictures of Trump flags. Because we were uh, staying at a hotel uh, last Saturday night in preparation to move Junior Dude back to college, Mm -hmm. back from college, and uh, woke up Sunday morning getting ready to go do all the moving, and and I had on local news to see what the weather was going to be like today. And there was a segment, which is prepackaged, the video, whatever it is. And it wasn't a Sinclair station, by the way, but it could have been. And it, they're running a national headline kind of thing about the January 6th uh, insurrection and how Republicans had voted down the commission to study it and so forth. And in the meantime, they're running B-roll, what they call B-roll, of mm-hmm. video of the January 6th violence. And I looked at it and realized, where are the Trump flags? Mm -hmm. Where are the, you know, we want Trump, stop the steal stuff. And it just wasn't there. They showed a couple of Gadsden flags. Right. They showed people marching. They showed American flags. But there were, you know, that picture of the Capitol building with these humongous Trump 2020 blue flags draped over the, you know, the balcony of the rotunda. It's so was missing those Defi- that defiling the capital all the defiling of the capital yeah, and, the and this yeah. and the smoke and everything else that was all just not in this video package mm-hmm. and so i wrote this up because not only that but the newscaster did not mention the words trump or republican once now, they didn't show a single trump sign single trump flag no mention of the republican party just january 6th insurrection mm-hmm. and this came up in the news again today with Mike Pence. 
yeah. completely using the passive voice to say brave capital city capital police quelled the violence mm -hmm. violence was quelled by, disaster was averted by whom we don't know democracy was supported and right. yeah and his his complete use of the passive voice to say <laughs> to not say this was trump republicans destroying our democracy trying to overthrow a legitimate election mm -hmm. him avoiding that by using the the uh, passive voice and uh, i think this is all intentional oh yeah i do too um because as i wrote like the tea party of 2009 when they did rewrite and say we're not republicans we're tea mm -hmm. party but also this whole anti-1619 project the whole critical race theory how yeah. we're not racist you know uh jason chaffetz was going on about this is just trying to tell us we're racist i'm not racist yeah you are Why, you know this is poor me good goodness gracious i'm not a racist person mm -hmm. all of this effort on the part of woke liberals to to paint us with a racist brush and and the defensiveness the freak out and defensiveness of this the nation is dealing with a critical mass of people who do not want to have any responsibility for anything bad or embarrassing from the past at all. Right. It is a generational problem. Mm -hmm. So it started with, I'm not a George W. Bush voter. I'm an independent Tea Party constitutional conservative. I'm not responsible for slavery. I wasn't alive in the slave times. Therefore, I'm not responsible for anything racist anywhere. Right. How dare you teach my innocent white grade schooler anything that might make her feel bad mm -hmm. and then you get people storming the capitol were tourists they were antifa i mean they weren't armed i mean they were just good patriots i mean they were anything except republicans just like the tea party well and anything but calling them a republican mob that that's where i think you you just took away um a smaller lesson from the mm -hmm. Bush administration, the mm -hmm. Tea Party, than the one that was uh, th that I believe, um, I believed in and still do. Mm -hmm. It was not that they will run away from Trump. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was always a possibility. It could still be a possibility. Oh, it still you could. Know, as long as as long as you are just absolutely shameless about about uh, airbrushing anything out of the past that's mm -hmm. embarrassing. Mm -hmm. to, uh, by next week, Donald Trump could be you know who Donald Trump who never heard of him. So that's still a possibility. Everything is possible when you can mm -hmm. wish away oh, anything yeah. in the past. And I don't I don't underestimate their ability with the help of media conglomerates to yeah. totally rewrite who they are. Well, and that, but that's the point. The point is the lesson they did learn from mm -hmm. the Bush administration was if we just do the guide for the married man thing. Yep. Deny, yep. deny, deny. We can get away with it. Right. We can get away with pretending we never heard of George Bush. We can get away with pretending that Barack Obama, our, our seething hatred of him, wasn't mm -hmm. racist. We can get away with uh, lying about deficits. We can get right. away with pretending we we supported something yesterday and didn't today. Yeah. Shit. And the we media. We can pretend the January 6th insurrection was just violence that didn't yeah. have anything to do with Republicans. Or tourism. Right. Or it never happened at all. Right. And right. and we can. Oh, shit. It's, it, this, is, this is a magic charm. Anything we want to have happened has happened. And, and I think I think we have to remember one thing. And mm -hmm. it, it's easy to forget in the midst of all the smoke and violence and outrage that we feel uh -huh. when we're being gaslighted. The purpose of the Republican mob reinventing itself is so that they can continue their white nationalist ends. Yes. Always. always. Tax cuts for billionaires. Mm -hmm. Pollute all we want. Mm -hmm. The workers are screwed. Black people don't get to vote, and we're going to run this country for rich, pe rich white people. Yeah, and that's that's the end game. And the way we do that is spend decades grooming a generation right. and two generations of voters mm -hmm. to believe anything Sean Hannity Brainwash. shits right. into their skull, anything, anything, right. and with a wink and a nod or not. Um, right. Because once you got that. Nothing can stop you. I mean, yep. once you yep. tell people, because this is this is what I'm really worried about, is that Donald Trump is making all these predictions about August. They won't come true, and there'll be another larger mob. Right, right. More heavily armed, showing up in D.C., 
demanding that he be put in place. Reinstated, everyone, reinstated. as the Constitution says it yeah. should be, right. And at that point, I sincerely hope the Capitol Police are backed up by National Guard, yeah. which are backed well, up by tanks and right. machine gun nests, because yeah. it's yeah. this is going to get very, very ugly, because these people are, are running right up against reality. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they will not tolerate... This is, they, they, the Republicans have proven this even the good ones have proven this for decades. They will not tolerate being told they're wrong yeah. at all. They will not. They will not allow themselves to be told they're wrong. There was a little back and forth today. Um, Adam Serwer, I think, in The Atlantic wrote this article that got praised by Media Hassan, which is great, about how these this, this Republican Party doesn't believe Democrats are even legitimate. And there's there's a lot of praise and back and forth and high five. Comes as a surprise to Barack Obama. <laughs> well, I, I, I on Twitter, a guy I know said, you know, you should really look at Digby's stuff from 2003. Uh huh. Is it, it a guy who's charming and a bastard? He's a bit of a charming bastard. Yes, he is. <laughs> um, to my knowledge, um, but it it is this has always been true. This is it is not it is not frustrating so much as it's incredibly frustrating that these are coming as revelations to people mm-hmm, who, mm-hmm. who really should know better. And, and there were people on there going, yeah, that's true. But you know what? Here's something that Mann and Ornstein wrote in 2012. Oh, you know, here's something they wrote in 2008. Oh, here's something somebody wrote in 2003. And you start to notice that, oh, they've always been this way. Yeah. The only people who've been lying about the nature of the Republican Party are anti-Trump Republicans mm-hmm. who don't want mm-hmm. to take any responsibility for the shit they did and the news media. Yeah. Who just cannot, cannot acknowledge that the two parties aren't identically evil on both sides. Well, that's and let's all they face it, Digby lost an awful lot of credibility when it turned out she was a chick. Right. Oh, yeah. No, no. It, <laughs> she, when it turned out she was a, a chick and Steve Gilliard was black, that was just like, yeah, the, like that was, oh, my, well, what? what? We, and, then, and then anything they wrote that gets written by a white guy in in the year of our Lord, 2021, years is, a later, revelation. is a revelation. Because her post... It would have graduated college this year, <laughs> you know, and be, yeah. be of legal yeah. drinking age in a couple yeah. of years. Yeah. And it is, it, so it is, it is a source of, um, kind of breathtaking repetitiveness to mm-hmm. have, I don't mind if you weren't paying any attention at all to politics. This yeah. is all new. You fell off the turnip truck yesterday. You have no idea. You have no memory of the past and you're sort of like sorting this shit out. Or if, if you are 19. Yeah, or, yeah, absolutely. Then fine. Yeah. If you're 19, you're just figuring yeah. this out. Fine. But if you have actually made a living for decades, spouting your political opinion from Washington you, D.C., from Washington D.C., or from Wisconsin, <laughs> or from, you know, you've had a national audience, you've been paid very handsomely for having these opinions, and it turns out every single one of your opinions was wrong. Mm-hmm. Then you, then don't you have like a moral obligation to just yeah. shut up? There were people who said, "Let's go into the ice field." <laughs> on the Titanic faster, faster, faster. And there were people who said back when it was being designed, I'm making this up. This boat will sink if it hits an iceberg. Now, and we at least don't have enough lifeboats for everybody yes, to get on. Minimum. Right. No, no, no. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Shouldn't the people who crash the fucking boat into the iceberg be the last people who sh- you should be listening to now? And the people who told you the boat would sink should be the first people you should be paying attention to. But no, that's not how it works because that's not how it works. And, an amazing example of this was the return of Peggy Noonan to our shores, to our fair shores. Um, Steve M. over at No More Mr. Nice blog uh, spotted, well, I added this, spotted Peggy Noonan copying off of Charlie Sykes' homework. <laughs> um, Charlie Sykes, who has been on you know, a couple of podcasts going, you know, the conservative movement, it was all just a sham. I it is shocking to me. I'm shattered to learn that basically everyone I trusted was a liar and everything I believe was bullshit, but he's not saying that. And yet on his own podcast, Charlie Sykes has repeatedly said the Republican party is racist because liberals made them racist. The Republican party um, didn't see this coming because liberals crying wolf made us numb to the idea that this, anything could be wrong. Donald Trump was elected because liberals, blah, blah, blah. It is it is congenitally impossible for these people to take responsibility for the shit they did. So imagine my surprise when Peggy Noonan pops up on our radar and Peggy Noonan has a long article about how everybody but the right was responsible for the Republican Party. I'm quoting from Steve M. Uh, no more Mr. Nice blogs now. Um, she blames human nature. 
She blames the decline in church attendance, even though QAnon <laughs> is a bunch of evangelicals. Mm -hmm. um, she blames woke mainstream media newsrooms. She blames the pandemic. She blames the trans transgender menace. She, she blames corporate progressivism and active progressivism. And she blames the elites and technology. But she never blames the people who are actually spreading the conspiracy theories. Trump is not at fault. And her employer, who, remember, is Rupert Murdoch, mm -hmm. is not at fault. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the right-wing media isn't at fault either. Conspiratorial Republicans aren't at fault. The people who write and transmit QAnon posts aren't at fault. These people have no agency or no responsibility for what they do. What these the actual actors, the actual bad players, have no responsibility for anything. It was all somebody else's fault. It was all Barack Obama's fault. It was all Al Gore's fault. It was all Bill Clinton's fault and Hillary Clinton. She was such a bad, bitchy lady. I couldn't vote for her. And I would just once, in an alternate universe, like to pick them up collectively by the lapels and shake them and say, for God's sakes, take some fucking responsibility for what you did, you fucking child. And put you mean them the in the party corner. of personal responsibility yeah, isn't taking those guys. responsibility. Yeah, yeah those guys. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. It's not just Peggy Noonan. No, and no. It's not just it's not just Charlie Sykes. Glenn Greenwald. <laughs> you and, know, hold up. And, I've got Glenn Greenwald muted on Twitter. Yes, you do. And why the term, term the words Glenn yeah. and Greenwald together do not appear on my Twitter feed. Uh, I I don't blame you. Um <laughs> I, I would However, and I, and, he was lauded in a an article this week. He was about he wasn't he he like the new leader of the right wing media or he, something. He right? and Matt Taibbi and a few other people who, you know. Are, were, were icons of the left for a while um are are now sort of on this congratulations liberal you forced us to become right-wing assholes <laughs> because the money's better i guess because nobody uh -huh. wants to pay them for their opinion on the left because the left doesn't pay anybody anything so um but it's blaming the left coalition now includes pretty much every never trumper the entire mainstream media peggy noonan glenn greenwald Matt Taibbi, and Charlie Sykes, um, which is a fairly weird coalition of people, but they all have one thing in common. They don't want to take any ownership for what they did or what they're doing. And it is, is as long as there's, so when I bitch about the, the, the MAGA people and the Trump base and the Republican Party believing that they just deny shit hard enough, they'll get away with it. They're not the only ones. Mm -hmm. All these other people have figured out, oh, if I just lie about it and I have a public platform, and I could just keep berating and berating and berating and getting people to to amplify my message. I can get away with it, too. Yeah. So that's what I'm worried about, that the whole culture of it's someone else's fault mm -hmm. has now become so endemic. Mm -hmm. And the only the, they all land in the same place. It's you and me, Blue Gal. Right. You and I are personally responsible for every bad thing that's ever happened. That's where this is all coming back to. It's finding they got to find a scapegoat because shit mm -hmm. is going wrong. And mm -hmm. they're all finding the same one, and it's us. Mm -hmm. It's always mm -hmm. us. I don't care. Me neither. What are you going to do? Fire me from my blog? What are, what are you going to do? Right? Yeah, you already kicked me off of Twitter. By the way, I told you we should have gone to that thing with uh, with Jack from Twitter. Laura Loomer oh. stole my stole my. Laura Loomer uh, tried to rush the stage and chain herself to her ex boyfriend Jack of Twitter. Yeah. Jack of Twitter. And while she was doing that, if I'd have been there. I could have gone to the stage, grabbed the microphone and said, hi, I'm Jeff Glass. I was kicked off Twitter for bullshit reasons and I'd like you. But no, you wouldn't let me go. And another it's Florida and I don't want you to go down there and yeah. talk about Bitcoin with Jack. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, uh, you wanna... I want to talk for a minute about uh, the future of Drift Glass. Mm -hmm. I'll we'll talk about 2022, which is only like what? Heard of it. It's five minutes from now. It is. It's like 17 months from now, mm -hmm. 18 months from now. And it's scary because mm -hmm. we're quite seriously fighting for the future of our democracy in this election. Yes, we, we are. We always talk about this, the most important election of your lifetime. Mm -hmm. And it always is. Yep. Uh, but, you know, Drift Glass, there's no reason we can't have some fun. Um, especially now that uh, Media Matters has receipts that there are 19, at least 19 Republican candidates who have expressed support for QAnon at one time or another on social media. And mm -hmm. screenshots are forever, Drift Glass. They are. So it's not just Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert who are grifting off the Q nettiness. Candidates from across the country are trying their hand at a midterm seat. Five from Florida, 
two each from Arizona, Nevada, and Ohio, one each from California, Maryland, New Jersey, Oregon, Texas, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Colorado. Mm-hmm. 18 are Republicans of the 19. Guess what the what 19th one is, Jeff Glass? Libertarian. Is he an independent? He's an independent. Independent. Yeah, I bet he's an independent, isn't he? He's an independent. Or she. I don't I don't want to misgender right. someone. They're yeah. an independent. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, 14 tried to run for Congress in 2020 and didn't make it. <laughs> so they're trying again. Uh, two previously ran for a state legislative seat in 2020. But this strip glass, this is where our ability to remember the past once again is revealed as our superpower. Mm-hmm. Because you remember Sharon Angle in 2010 running for the Senate seat. I do. Yeah, he was running against, she was running against Harry Reid. There's this wonderful video from 2010 of Rachel Maddow covering Sharon Engel and wondering aloud. This is Rachel Maddow, not Sharon Engel. Rachel Maddow wondering aloud if all of Sharon Engel's rhetoric is now going to be normal. (laughs) Normal. Is this going to be normal in the Republican Party to say Second Amendment solutions? Hmm. 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 And now it is. is. Yeah, now it is. Mm -hmm. And it's just adorable. That, you know, 11 years ago, she was saying, is this going to be like the new Republican normal? So innocent. So innocent. Yeah. Well, Uh, but Sharon Angle. So Sharon Angle, we, you know, got, she didn't win. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And then you remember, Christine, I am not a witch O'Donnell. Oh, uh, vividly. 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 Mm -hmm. Again, and and both of them running against health care and both of the, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not a witch was her thing. And, you know, Mm -hmm. she was anti-masturbation at one time. and. Mm -hmm. And they had all the receipts on her. Um, so here's the here's the deal, Drift Glass. We have these Republicans who are running and have a connection in some way on social media. Media Matters has the screenshots of them voicing support for QAnon. And so I think we have an opportunity to insist that where we go one, we go all. Mm-hmm. And that if you're running as a Republican anywhere in the country, you should be asked the following questions. Do you think the U.S. needs a Myanmar-style coup to overthrow the U.S. government? No, but Minimar, yes. <laughs> Definitely Minibar, Isobar. Minibar. <laughs> or Minotaur actually would be the best. Minotaur. <laughs> a Minotaur coup? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Do you think the Rothschilds or other Jewish space laser people are responsible for California wildfires? Mm. Uh, will you agree to inject bleach if you contract COVID-19? Already did feel great. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Is wearing a mask to prevent the spread of COVID exactly the same as being murdered in a gas chamber? Because if you're not supportive of Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, you're not really a Republican. Well, now I have one more question for every Republican running for president and then I'm done. Sure. Who is president of the United States right now? Well, technically, <laughs> it's the guy in the White House. But well, I want to know who, where, where these folks' loyalty to Q, because where we go one, we go all. That's supposed to mean uni- where, Where's your party unity? Really? If you're not willing to back up, come on, man, uh, and endorse everything that Marjorie Taylor Greene has said about the Holocaust, I don't think you're a real Republican. Well, let's let's look at the Attorney General race in Texas. <laughs> You Which mean one? the one where the current occupier of that office is under indictment and is that, probably the, going to jail? You have these super corrupt, probably going to jail, <laughs> Ken Paxton, versus George P. Bush, <laughs> P. Who, is, who is Jeb's son, who has absolutely thrown his entire family under the bus. In ex- exchange for Trump's support. In exchange for, you know, licking Trump's taint. He, Did you uh, know he has a beer koozie with him I shaking do. Trump's hand on I it? I do. It's a big yeah. thing. The only Bush I ever trusted. And, you know, and the Bush family has a long history of just doing whatever the fuck is necessary mm-hmm. to win elections. So mm-hmm. I'm sure somewhere in heaven, his dad, his granddaddy is smiling down going, good, good going, George P. You know, if you have to sell your family out for power, that's what you do. Uh, and then there's Alan West, who just seceded from the GOP chair in Texas, famous secessionist and right wing lunatic who moved to Texas so he could take over the GOP. Uh, and, and T-Pain on Twitter said it either means that mm-hmm. he's running for governor 
Right. Or he's under indictment. Or he's running from the law. Right. Running this is one of two law. things he's That's running. It. Right. Right. Uh, but I, I like all of your suggestions if we were living in an alternate universe where mm-hmm. anyone would ever ask those questions of anyone running for office and they would ever answer them. Well, but if, I think you can do a letter to the editor for your particular congressional sure race can. and insist on knowing the answer to those questions well, I, and I, make I'm it sure, a local news story. I'm sure you can. Um, I, I am I am of the opinion that we are in the 27th year of a zombie apocalypse. Ah, okay. And we keep we keep tricking ourselves into thinking that if only we can reason with the zombies. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. no, you can't. They're, that, they're zombies. They're, they want to eat your brain. I don't they want to a... reason with the zombies. I want to point out the absurdity of electing a zombie to Congress. Right. But you're pointing it out to other zombies. No, I'm pointing it out to people who might be on the fence about voting in a midterm election. I, I w- I'm... And I think if you make them laugh. Mm-hmm. And realize how absurd it is to have your representative be one of those people, mm-hmm. then you might that might increase your desire to overcome the hurdles to voting and go vote so that these people are not representing you in Congress. I, I am all in favor of every strategy that might I want to break through the cloud, you know, and say, I'm... look at how absurd this and and you will admit drift class. That Sharon Angle and Christine, I am not a witch O'Donnell, that absurdity broke through the it cloud did. of, it did. oh, I don't have to vote this midterm. I don't have to vote in 2010. I'll just stay home. Not that we didn't lose a bunch of seats in 2010. That was a bad year for Democrats. It was. But Christine O'Donnell and Sharon Angle did not wind up in the Senate. It did. And I, like I said, any strategy mm-hmm. that will work to, to hang on to the House, preferably increase our numbers in the House, mm-hmm. hang on to the Senate, I'm in favor of. I have a very dark view of the absolute collapse of the political press in this country. They will not cover these stories. They will not carry those things. They will do it on MSNBC, but MSNBC is talking to you and me and not talking to anybody else. And I have um, absolute faith in the ability of the Fox News, right-wing radio, blah, 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 ecosystem to just outshout anything. And that everyone in the GOP, all 74 million of them that voted for Donald Trump are all in denial. They all are all in the same tank with each other. And if we can get two or 3%, that's great. And any strategy that does that is great. I just have never seen any strategy up until now that works. All I see is a party that collectively is getting more and more violently deranged. And a, a press that is getting more and more terrified of talking about it in public for I, for fear of their lives, I guess, or for fear of the paychecks, but they don't, they really don't want to discuss the fact that the Republican party has lost its mind. Mm-hmm. I see, a, I see a lot of people on, on prominent podcasts going, holy shit, the Republican party's lost its mind, which you mm-hmm. know, is kind of like, yeah, holy shit, the sun rose in the East. Now what? And nobody seems to have any strategy for how to actually take power away from them and make them a minority party in, in fact, until, you know, demographics and morbidity charts starts wiping them off the map. But until then, um, this is a long, hard, <laughs> ugly fight. And um, it's not going to get easier. No. Everybody should just sort of sort of wrap their heads around the fact that this is, this is a long, ugly fight. What did I say to you yesterday? Mm-hmm. Before elections, chop wood, carry water. After elections, chop wood, carry water. And it's chop wood, carry water every damn day. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 and it always will be. And it always yeah. has been. I mean, this is the, part yeah. of the thing that um, makes me laugh when I hear our, our anti-Trump, never-Trump friends bellowing, which they do mm-hmm. on pretty much every podcast. You don't, liberals don't understand how hard <laughs> it is, how hard it was to quit the Nazi party. You know, how hard it has been to give up all of the blah, 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 and only be on MSNBC like six times a week. It's such a fucking hardship. You don't understand fighting against Trump for five years is exhausting. And I just, and because they won't talk to anyone outside their bubble, it's like, yeah, we kind of do. Because we're never invited into the mainstream media conversation. You are. Um, we've been fighting against the party that your party has become for decades. And some people in this country, brown people in this country, have been fighting against it for generations. Yep. yep. So shut 
up about how much you're suffering because you lost your radio gig. And now you have to suffice by having a large subsidized media conglomerate at your disposal and constant profitable appearances on cable TV that you have to just make do with that. And that's, I don't want to hear that anymore. And I don't want to hear how hard it is because you know what? It is hard. And, and I'm kind of glad you're getting it through your head that when, when you were firing at us from protected positions, it was sure a lot of fun, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun calling liberals moochers and anti-American and uh, terrorist lovers and just pot shotting at us from that, that Carl Rove high ground. You all love that. You made money off of it. You bought houses off it. You built careers off of it. And now you're at the other side of that big gun. And it isn't any fun, is it? It's no fun at all. It's no fun at all to, to look up at the high ground and see those big guns from Fox News and Hate Radio pointing at you and complain about how hard it is to do this fight every day. Believe me, we know how hard it is. And we could make some common cause if you would quit blaming us <laughs> Or your party turning into a shithole. It was your fault. Own it. You know, the, the one guy who did that this week, one guy, never mm -hmm. expected, Joe Walsh. Yeah, he did. Deadbeat Joe. Deadbeat Joe went on the Twitter machine and said, you know what? My party is fucked forever. It is, you know, the, one of the two parties is just gone forever. I had a big part in that. I contributed to that. I yes, contributed he admitted that. it. I, yes. And I'm going to spend the rest of my active life trying to de-radicalize those people. Period. None of this, and the left is just as bad. None of this, you know, you don't appreciate how hard it is. None of this, you know what the Democrats should do? They should do what I tell them to do. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you fucked up your own party so badly you want to come over and, and, and advise mine on how to run things? No. Be a little humble. And that part is the part that galls me. Because if you fucked up that badly for that long, you really should have a little bit of humility about lecturing other people about how to run shit. Now, if you have good ideas... As I said before, if you want to tell me about the mistresses and affairs and drug deals of prominent Republicans so we can pry them out of office, tell us. I'm mm -hmm. all ears. But all I've ever heard is send us more contributions, send us more money. We're fighting for democracy. Well, great. That's great. Welcome to the fight. So Driftglass, yeah, I wanted to talk about local state news, actually, about um, how Capital Facts, which is I think we've talked about before is a guy who uh, in the back in the day used to have a faxed newsletter. Mm -hmm. And this was his news model of covering the state capitol in Illinois, doing real shoe leather reporting on what was going on, talking to legislators about bills and what was going to pass and what wasn't, and faxing it to people. And he had a subscription model and was able to support uh, his efforts with that because the news that he was giving people was not news they could get anywhere else right. because he was doing it. Um, and uh, he pointed us to an article in our local newspaper about, and it was just a bullet pointed article about the top five legislative things happening in the Illinois state house this week. Mm -hmm. Nothing earth shattering. They, they passed a bill that will require high school history teachers to, mention Asian American history in, uh -huh. in the classroom. Yeah. Um, they, uh, high, high schools in Illinois will now provide free menstrual products. Yes. Feminine to their students. Product. Yep. Uh, actually fourth grade and up because that's how early some girls are menstruating. Um, and it was those kind of things. But the thing that, the word that kept jumping out at me in that article was bipartisan. Yeah. And how Republicans in the state house were also voting for these things. And they had some questions and some objections. There was one objection to, well, what if, why should we have to put menstrual products in the boys' bathroom? Won't they just use those to clog up the toilets? Mm -hmm. And uh, someone pointed out, look, my brother used to buy me mine. Right. And if my family is poor, and I'm out of school one day with cramps, my brother can bring them to me. And by the way, boys will always find a way to clog the to toilet. To clog the, they, they'll always. use their own clothing to yeah. do it. So yeah. Toilet paper. <laughs> toilet paper is abundantly available in the, yeah. in the boys' room. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, but, but 
the fact is bipartisanship was the thing coming up over and over again, that Republicans would go along and some Republicans were voting for these measures, these five mm-hmm. measures. And you and I talked about this, that because of the Democratic supermajority, because Chicago has so many representatives, because that is the, the you know, n- center of the population of our state, mm-hmm. uh, Republicans are basically guests in the state house. Yes. They're there they're they're there but they're a permanent minority. Mm-hmm. And if they want to do something good for their constituents, they have to cooperate with Democrats. Mhm. And there isn't a filibuster where where the Republican minority can run in and say, "Oh, we're just going to stop everything." Menstrual products? Are you insane? Let's yeah, read from Dr. Yeah, we're going to filibuster Steve. that by yeah. reading green eggs and ham for 3 days or we're just going to lift our finger and say no vote. Mhm. And everything stops the way it happens in the U.S. Senate. That's right. Uh, this this is getting very frustrating very fast, and at all the firepower that we're leveling at Kristen Cinema and Joe Manchin is warranted. There are apparently a total of nine senators on yep. our side who really want to keep the filibuster. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're just not taking the heat that these other two senators are. Right. Uh, so, you know, they like their privilege. They like their old fashioned way of doing things for whatever the reason. Uh, they seem to think this is OK. And I certainly hope that they can be brought around to at least saying if you want to filibuster something. I mean, this is my idea and this is the idea of uh, a couple other people of just. Break out the cots. Right. You have to talk and you have to you have to do a Bernie Sanders filibuster where you're actually give, doing a filibuster on a political topic that is part of the bill that you're discussing. Mm-hmm. Well, you're on your and seat. You're, and yeah. the majority of your caucus has to sit there and listen to you. You mm-hmm. can't just stand on your own. And uh, and the rules of filibuster, you know, you can't sit down. You can't whatever you have to you have to do it. And this. Mitch McConnell raising his little finger and saying we won't do it doesn't fly. Um, okay, so well, that that and the what's so maddening is that I think it's either Kristen Cinema is an idiot, mm-hmm. or or she she just made up a bunch of stuff about the the sanctified history of the filibuster, all of which right. was bullshit, all of which right. was bullshit. She didn't know what she's talking about. It's just a thing that lets me get attention and hold things up. And block things, mm-hmm. and that's her privilege. Now, the the flip side is, you know, when Republicans are in the majority, um, they find the filibuster inconvenient too. But the difference is, Mitch McConnell just says, you know what? As of right now, the filibuster no longer counts for Supreme Court nominations. Let's go, and the Republicans all drop their objection, and they get to ram through as many Supreme Court mm-hmm. justices as mm-hmm. they want. They have yeah. no compunction about saying. We're going to have another little carve out here for the thing we want to do. Right. Now we're making a new rule that says you can't stop us from doing the one thing we want to do. And they and and Democrats lose their mind and say, oh, my God, you're violent. And then a year later, it never happened. Right. And and I understand that we're fighting against evil here. The Republican Party is an evil force in our government. Doesn't have to be. Might not be 10 years from now. But right now, it's a despicable evil force. And if you can't muster the cojones to have a carve out in your sanctified filibuster for actually saving democracy, which is the thing that makes the filibuster possible, having a democratic system, then I don't know what, I don't know why you're a Democrat. I have no idea why you're not a a serving Republican, because if you are so terrified of democracy that you're willing to hide behind a Jim Crow era Mm -hmm. Um, thing that was just made up to stop civil rights legislation and Mm -hmm. pretend that that's a sanctified thing that everyone has always loved. And the founding fathers really would have loved it if they thought of it. No, the founding fathers explicitly did not want um, minority being able to strangle the the majoritarian rule in the Senate. Right. Um, Then I don't know why you're in my party. You know, I can Mm -hmm. see having, wanting to preserve the ability to stop a runaway train on, I don't know, taxes or, or spending, whatever it is you're thinking of. But this is about democracy. Mm-hmm. And I don't understand how 
Well, I do understand. That's that's the that's the shame. There's no one around to hold anyone res- responsible or accountable mm-hmm. other than mm-hmm. other than Joe Manchin's voters, right? Who are and, you know, but no, and and this every member of the Senate is a millionaire, right? So the I mean, this is the thing, and it costs a million dollars at least to run a Senate campaign. So um, oh, okay. the money in politics is just so corrupting, and and we knew that was going to happen. Now, drift class, I need to talk to you. Can you see me? Uh Hold on a second. Now I can. I was up late last night <laughs> for some reason. Mm-hmm. And we're at 56 minutes. Okay. So there, we forgot to read about the um, valedictorian. Mm-hmm. I'm up on the top of page two. Gotcha. Uh, we read the next four items. Uh-huh. And then you, we have these other things to read. We can skip but over I anything I think we need to read them because you wrote them and they're good. Okay. And, and get through it. Because if we're going into 18 minutes after the hour, I'm going to, I'm not going to finish. And we're not going to do trivia or anything else tonight. Okay. I'm just, All right. So anyway, we're going to do a little bit of a news roundup mixed in with some um, editorial podcast reviews from Drift Glass now. <laughs> um, I, I want to applaud the Lake Highlands High School valedictorian Paxton Smith, who switched out her approved speech to talk about abortion rights in her speech to her high school graduating class. Uh, She was very eloquent and she should be applauded for her courage. I also want to point out 24 hours in the life of Nicholas Wallace. Uh, And, and by the way, my ex-husband is a alumnus of Stanford law school. Mm -hmm. So, and I, and I know how he would feel about this. (laughs) And I know how a lot of people who go to law school would feel about this. And it's about uh, the right of free expression in an academic <laughs> setting is is very important to them. Uh, but on Wednesday, uh, Nicholas Wallace was not allowed to graduate from Stanford Law. Uh, and his uh, diploma was being held up because a top member of the school's Federalist Society chapter issued a formal complaint against him for making fun of the Federalist Society. No, not no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stanford didn't just place a hold on Wallace's diploma. It also forced him to undergo a disciplinary investigation in the middle of finals. And by withholding his degree, it prevented him from taking the bar exam. The next day, on Thursday, Stanford spokesman told the school that they will not move forward with the investigation into Nicholas Wallace for making fun of the Federal Society because he engaged in protected speech. Mm-hmm. And the hold on his diploma had been lifted. Isn't that nice? And I guarantee you that in that 24-hour period, there were a number of Stanford Law School <laughs> contributors, yeah. attorneys, mm-hmm. and uh, other uh, people with financial connections to the university who uh, made their opinions known. <laughs> um, and I want to do a quick podcast review of, of not our podcast, of two good podcasts I listened to this week. Um, that are prominent that you probably already know of. One is Ezra Klein's interview with Barack Obama. And it is, it was eerie how much 2021 Barack Obama sounds like 2004 liberal blogosphere. (laughs) It's, it, you know, now he's out of office. Now we can talk freely. Uh, How much the media is broken and how much both siderism is toxic. Um, uh, uh, President Obama makes some good points about the practicality of politics. And he admits to some mistakes like, paying out those weekly tax cuts to people in paychecks instead of one lump sum. That was terrible marketing, fine policy, shitty marketing. And it was so bad that people thought they hadn't gotten a tax cut and had actually had their taxes increased. There was also a tacit admission that most people just don't pay any attention to anything. Um, Obama saved the economy, but it took years to get really going. Most people didn't feel the effects immediately. So a lot of them voted Republican. And then Trump inherited this improving economy and got credit for the stuff that Barack Obama did. And it was a very good interview. Um, It's also, it's a little bit maddening, but it's, it's worth your listen. The second one is pod save America. Those, those lads who served under Barack Obama and were speech writers had its 500th episode, a letters episode. It was very good. They decided to do a letters episode. I wonder where they got that idea. Well, they'll get to 600 eventually blue gal. (laughs) Gotta gotta give them the encouragement. (laughs) You can do it guys. You can do it. Um, and they didn't mention us prominently, which is, you know, they only had they an hour. Do. <laughs> they only had an hour. So yeah, I guess we got squeezed out. Uh, but they, they did letters and it was, it was really good. I, I, there were parts of it that made me laugh. One listener, um, told them that they had inspired that listener to major in political science and go into public service. 
And what more could you ask for? Uh, another listener wanted to know why things haven't gotten any easier after electing Biden in a Democratic Congress. Because, and it's because hanging on to democracy is never easier. It's never easy. Um, it also cracked me up uh, comparing Charlie Sykes's constant complaint to these people's constant complaint. And they were, they were very blunt about it. They said, look, it's always going to be hard. It's always going to be tough. It's a lifelong struggle. Get over it. Which I'm like, you know what? Sometimes you got to give somebody grown-up advice. Um, they also said, stop complaining about the Democrats' bad messaging. They get all these letters and all these things. Why can't Democrats message better? Why can't they wordsmith better? Because no amount of wordsmithing will overcome the fact that the right has Fox News and Sinclair and hate radio and on and on. And the left has no such megaphone. And because the right has such a huge megaphone, all their stupid talking points get blasted into the mainstream media. And there simply is no liberal equivalent. There's no amount of word trickery that can overcome that overwhelming advantage. They, they use the advantage of, they use the analogy of we fight with pocket knives. They have stealth bombers and tanks. Why do you think we keep losing the messaging war? Um, and then this actually literally made me laugh. They were asked whether pundits influenced Obama's White House and their answer that David Brooks was effectively their deputy chief of staff made me laugh <laughs> and cringe at the same time. And they were laughing about that. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. Yeah. And uh, in other news, uh, I, I wanted to point out a couple of things that I had missed in the course of the election. Mm -hmm. I had just totally missed these stories. And if you've missed them, too, then I, I want to make sure you hear about them. Um, it turns out that Charles Koch of the Koch brothers and George Soros have been teaming up and allowing their foundations to back a new think tank, which was in 2019, founded in 2019. It's called the Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft. Uh, it's a think tank that opened its doors in 2019, a few blocks from the White House. It boasts a roster of leading academics, mostly from outside Washington, along with several Pentagon and State Department veterans, who all desperately see a need to, quote, reassess some of the first principles and inject more restraint into U.S. foreign policy. How interesting. Wow. The <laughs> yeah. end times are truly upon us. Well, so. and it just goes to show you that there are people like George Soros and Charles Koch who have billions to burn. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I'll just do them to the academics and they can do a Washington thing and less militarism in the United States. That'd be great. And then uh, the extent to which private schools made out like bandits with PPP loans. And that, I have found, has been tightened up since the story broke back at the end of last year. But, like, the the school that Barack Obama's kids went to, Sidwell Friends, they got, mm -hmm. a, you know, multi-million dollar PPP loans. And the deal was that public schools couldn't apply for PPP loans because they're not businesses, but private schools are businesses. And <laughs> And then the private school says, well... You know, we have, this is an emergency, and we have rules that say we can't touch our endowment right. to pay salaries. Well, whose rules are those? Fuck you. Yeah, well, th we <laughs> have a- the rules. You have a pandemic. We have a you mountain know? of money over here, but we're not allowed to touch right. it in case- Steve, of the, the LA school where Steve Mnuchin's kids go got like $7.2 <laughs> million of taxpayer money. It's absurd. And then, and then the LA school system can't apply for that kind of loan. They got like you know a hundred thousand dollars from the CARES Act, mm -hmm. and that's it. You know enough. And then I really want to share this absurd quote of the week. This is from Salon, and you know about this pipeline hack with yeah. Dark Side that tied up the the gas supply on the East Coast. Okay. Yes, indeed. This is the absurd quote of the week. In the wake of the dark side hack on East Coast oil pipelines. Okay. This is the um, CEO of the uh, gas and uh, petroleum lobbying group, the American Petroleum Institute. The CEO, Mike Summers, suggested that it was just as important to protect the industry from regulators as it is from cyber attacks. <laughs> We need, of course, to take care of cybersecurity, but we also need to protect existing infrastructure from attacks from regulators and government officials who want to shut these pipelines down permanently, you know? God. Oh, God. Yeah. The American Petroleum Institute 
has instead pushed the federal government to grant exemptions and fuel waivers to energy companies because of the attack. <laughs> that this emergency means we need less regulation. You don't understand. <laughs> we need less regulation because we got a You know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are they going to deduct the ransom from their taxes? Uh, I bet you they are. Uh, and then uh, on on the the counterpoint to that is uh, an, the executive director of a public interest nonprofit, which I'm sure is funded far less than the yeah. American Petroleum Institute. This is Pipeline Safety Trust. He said, over the years, control of Colonial Pipeline has moved away from oil and gas companies toward private equity firms. <laughs> These types of investors have a history of wringing every dollar of revenue out of an asset while spending as little as possible on things like safety and infrastructure and cybersecurity, right? You know what's gone right down the memory hole? What? Enron. Enron. We need less regulation now. You we know. need to, you know, rigging the market, um, yeah. turning off people's power to jack up prices right. on purpose, screwing with people, and then using your enormous financial uh, windfalls to buy politicians. Right. And getting away with it because it's marketing and it's regulation. It's all very complicated and only well, we and, understand. And we're, we're, we're serving the needs of our investors, you know. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. The Biden continues. Jobs report keeps getting better. We had 559,000 jobs added last month and unemployment rate fell to 5.8%. The big news here is that wages are starting to creep up. That's yes. Very good. Uh, I find it fascinating that Biden is talking full employment instead of deficits. That is straight out of Stephanie Kelton's monitored monetary policy book. Honestly, don't tell anybody. <laughs> no, no. But, I, but you know what? Uh, during his uh, chat with Ezra Klein, Barack Obama also talked about the difference between what happens when you're operating in the deficit hawk environment, right? And now, and they're just yeah. the enormous um, possibilities that open up when people aren't saying, you know, you can't spend any money on anything. You know right. that, don't no, you? We're done with that. We're yeah. done with that. Yeah, uh, hopefully. Confirmed coronavirus cases in the U.S. have fallen to the lowest level since March of 2020 when the pandemic began. The U.S. averaged roughly 16,860 new cases per day over the past week, and new cases declined in 43 states while holding steady elsewhere. The Biden administration outlined its plan for donating an initial 25 million COVID-19 vaccine doses to help low- and middle-income nations combat the pandemic. More than 100 scholars of democracy warned that, quote, our entire democracy is now at risk, unquote, as a result of Republican-led states proposing or implementing radical changes to election laws. Joe Biden has asked the Vice President Harris to lead the administration's efforts to protect voting rights. The move comes as several Republican-led state legislatures have pushed to enact voting restrictions, which Biden called an unprecedented assault on democracy. Joe Biden actually called out Democratic Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema for aligning too closely with Republicans and blocking efforts to pass voting rights bills and other priorities. Quote, I hear all the folks on TV saying, why doesn't Biden get this done? Well, because Biden only has a majority of effectively four votes in the House and a tie in the Senate with two members of the Senate who vote more with my Republican friends. The Biden administration suspended oil and gas leases in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, undoing a move made by the Trump administration late last year. Won't anyone think of the hedge fund manager's drift glass? They've, they've suffered so. They've suffered so. Uh, in a truly pouty old school blogger move, Donald Trump burned his blog down. <laughs> nobody's paying attention and people are making fun of it. Damn you all. Biden's latest infrastructure counteroffer would keep Trump's 2017 tax cuts intact in exchange for $1 trillion in new spending on top of the $400 billion in baseline spending already approved for infrastructure needs. Instead of paying for the American, paying for, there it is, the American Jobs Plan by raising the corporate tax rate, the bipartisan infrastructure package would be financed through a 15% minimum tax on U.S. corporations and other tax proposals including beefing up IRS audits and tax enforcement on the wealthy. Mm -hmm. This is what we call obstruction bait. Right. <laughs> Once Republicans say- They're not going to vote for this. Nah. And they, they don't want to spend any new money. They, they hate yeah. the fact they're spending any money at all. Once they say no, Biden can go, okay, well, I guess we, we tried. Let's, uh, let's go yeah. back to reconciliation. 
Uh, House Republican Mo Brooks is avoiding being served a lawsuit from Eric Swalwell over inciting the Capitol attack. He's not returning calls or emails, and he's hiding from Swalwell's private investigators. Now, remember that in January of 2021, Mo Brooks allegedly helped plan Trump's insurrection tailgate party, and he was there on that day telling the mob, today is the day American patriots start taking down names and kicking ass. Texas Democrats abandoned the state house floor late Sunday night to block a vote on one of the most restrictive voting bills in the nation. Democrats staged the walkout with an hour left in the legislature to approve the bill, leaving the House without a quorum needed to take a vote. In response, Texas Governor Greg Abbott threatened to defund the state legislature. <laughs> uh, Louis DeJoy is being investigated for something that former Illinois Governor George Ryan went to prison for. Uh, the investigation focuses on allegations that DeJoy pressured employees at his former company, New Breed Logistics, to make contributions to Republican candidates or attend political fundraisers, which he would then reimburse through bonuses, which you're absolutely not allowed to do. In Matt Gates always makes things worse for Matt Gates news, the Justice Department is investigating whether Matt Gates obstructed justice when he called a witness in the poten in a potential sex crimes investigation he, and told her how to testify. He, he did. He did. I mean, we have to say alleged, probably, but prosecutors he did. are are saying, you know, if I was his lawyer, <laughs> yeah, I would have told him to shut up and don't call anybody. I would. I would smash every phone in his house and put him in a cage. <laughs> uh, Senate Republicans blocked the creation of an independent bipartisan commission to investigate the January 6th insurrection attack on the Capitol using their filibuster power in the Senate for the first time during the Biden's presidency. The vote was 54 in favor, 35 against, 11 not voting, short of the 60 votes needed to proceed. And that's just because of the Republican filibuster. That's the only reason it's not passed. The only reason. 73% of Republican voters blame, quote, left-wing protesters trying to make Trump look bad for the January 6th riot. That's MAGA, sedition, Trump mob, Republican riot at mm -hmm. the Capitol. Now, 23% of Republicans agree that the government, media, and financial worlds of the U.S. are controlled by a group of Satan-worshipping pedophiles who run a global child sex trafficking operation. 28% agree that there's a storm coming soon that will sweep away the elites in power and restore the rightful leaders. And 28% also agree that because things have gotten so far off track, true American patriots may have to resort to violence in order to save the country. That's terrifying. Yeah, a is. lot of those 28% are armed. Yes, they are. And they are being told by their president mm -hmm. that they have every right to do what they're doing and think what they're thinking. And Chuck Carlson is paying for his Florida mansion by telling these meatheads that they're patriots. And Missouri is a mess. If you didn't watch Rachel Maddow on no. Thursday night, it was one story after another about Missouri State House uh, officials and their utter corruption. Yep. And uh, highly recommend that. And sorry we're running out of time, but we just are. Mm -hmm. We love you. Very much. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Belle the Destroyer. She's showing off her belly in a sunny sunspot because that's what she does. And, of course, Belle eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cats will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured. Freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Belle the Destroyer at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise, hashtag fire to joy. Imprisoned to joy. I think we have to update And put that. him in jail. Yeah. You know, he lied to Congress, too. To joy to jail. Mm-hmm. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. Oh, gourmet coffee. It's so good. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal postal address information, buy me a coffee, Patreon, merch, all of it is there. 
at ProLeftPod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are sorry they don't have 500 bucks to pay for a custom Don Jr. video to celebrate his dad's second impeachment. Donald Trump Jr. here. Have you watched the news? Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.